Guys, Dan Hendrickson here. We're at Tavistock Golf Club today. I'm up here playing in a PGA Alliance event and I've bumped into James Ruth. And you will have seen James this week on the channel when we've been playing at China Fleet. And I thought whilst we got him here, we'll do a quick what's in the bag to see what he's using during that vlog and now what he's using. Let's meet up with James. What is that dog? Cockapoo. A cockapoo? Yeah. Is that your, that's, that's your driver head cover? Yeah, my little what's Bertie. The, what's the story behind that one then? Uh, I got a cockapoo three years ago. He literally lives by my side. So I uh, managed to find a head cover that resembled him, chocolate brown, but he's, he's faded a little bit over the couple of summers. <laughs> So James, uh, great vlog this week, absolutely fantastic, great fun, Enjoy, always enjoy playing golf with you, but um, some serious golf being played yeah. out there. Yeah, no, um, yeah, last couple of years I started to play yeah, really nicely and uh, yeah, trying to make a, another go of it. So. so nine birdies you had out there? Yeah. I was, when I was doing the editing I could see obviously them all rolling in, I couldn't remember what was going on on the day, but nine birdies, so you're playing some seriously good golf at the moment and is there a plan to sort of get back onto the onto tour? Yeah definitely, um, yeah, I've been working with my coach now since 2010 but the biggest thing I've sort of, wedge game has improved massively over the yeah. last sort of couple of years um, and as you can see from the video I was sort of knocking it into 10-12 feet and it makes it a lot easier to hold from there than it does from 20 to 30 feet. And obviously part of that whole story of us playing around there is that you and Paul and you've played a lot of golf with Paul haven't you over the yeah. years lots of golf and traveled together and uh, but winning the 2017 four ball championships was obviously a, a pretty pretty good result for you guys wasn't it yeah massively you know came back from behind and you know always enjoy playing with Paul uh, learn a lot of him in terms of getting the ball pin high and yeah. that can only help my game to be honest so if we start off with your wedges then so your Vokey wedge man yeah so what have you got in there at the moment? I've got a 60 degree, sort of the L grind with four degrees of bounce. Okay, um, so SM7? SM7, yeah. yeah. So are you looking to go to SM8 at some Yeah, stage? just literally ordered SM8 have you, right, this okay. week. Yeah. Um, really enjoyed the testing of them. Uh, they've moved the weights and uh, you know, really feel like they've improved. So the very low bounce, so you've got the, obviously the L grind is, is, is a seriously low bounce, isn't yeah. it? So that would scare a lot of people, but you're obviously a bit of a sweeper when it comes to your lob wedge. Yeah, definitely. And like to sort of see the face as open as possible. Yeah. Um, so I can lay that flat and know that, you know, the club's not going to bounce too much and, you know, cannon into the ball. And what about shafts and grips and things Literally like that? Literally the lightest wedge shaft they do. So it's basically, I've got the wedge flex in there. Yes. Um, used to have the same as my irons, but I just found that the wedges came out too heavy yeah. and struggled with the sort of feel around the green. So I just go for the standard wedge when flex. When I went to something a bit heavier in my wedges, I found that they they were, I didn't really get any feedback off them. They were like, they felt hard off the face. I don't know, is that Yeah, I just lost felt? a lot of feel. Um, especially with the sort of softer, um, more feel shots. Um, I just didn't feel like I could feel where the club head was. Yeah, and that runs right the way through. So what happens then? You go 60 and then you go into- 54, 54. with the M grind, um, okay, so eight, eight degrees bounce. of bounce. Yeah. yeah. Um, same shaft? Exactly the same shaft in all three of my wedges. Okay, and then you've got what, a 50 or 52? Uh, yeah, 50 with the F grind and also 8 degrees. And F grind, and that's what, what bounces on that then? 8 as well. 8 bounce on yeah. that. Okay, so ideally you're looking at a kind of a shallower angle of attack on all of your wedge game then if you're if you're playing bounces that are particularly low. Correct. Um, you're obviously trying to sweep it a little bit more and I know you're working with somebody new on with your wedge game. Yeah. So, and then when you go into SM8 then, when you move on, are you looking to, to basically replace like for like, or are you kind of, have you gone for a different approach? Slightly higher bounce um, in the lob wedge, just for the fact of with the SM8s, you don't get the one that pops up yeah. a little bit. Um, so it's going to be easier for me to control my ball flight. So okay. one of the issues I have had is the ball popping up in the air a little bit. Yeah, I which got it. I got it. The spin has taken off it. Um, with the SM8s, I found out they were coming in a lot lower with a lot more spin, which is what you want. And then you move into irons. Yeah. And you've had these for a little while now. Yeah, You've a couple been of years. Playing Strix and Irons for yeah. some time now, I would say. Um, what have you got in here? Have you um, got a bit of a combo set going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got blades up to a seven iron. Okay. Um, yeah, they're the Z, Z Forge 785s. Yeah. Okay. Um, drag, and that then, on, drag that one out of there. Let's have a little look at what that one's all about. A uh, really beautiful looking head. Yes. Um, and that is shaft. What shaft have you got in uh, there? Shaft in that is the KBS Tor 130 Extra Stiff. So very sort of pokery. Yeah. Yeah, very, really very stiff. stiff. Yeah. Um, again, what, what makes you go, do you think, you know, from a feel point of view, have you had that, that shaft for some time? 
I would say I've had that shaft for about seven years. Yeah. Um, you're so similar moved to it from club to club when you've changed your correct. Clubs. Yeah, I've tested others, but that one's to come out come more consistent for me um, in terms of distance and dispersion. And you generally find, don't you, with and you know, I've I've certainly had it with the Project X shaft that I've had for a number of years now. But lots of good players, they once they find a shaft that they like, that it's very often that they'll stick with it. Yeah, is that it's kind of the case. You've seen that throughout yeah, the years. Yeah, definitely. I've stuff. had the same driver shaft for the last five years. I've only just changed this week, um, but it's taken something really special to take me out of you know that shaft and that head. Yeah, um, yeah I'm not one massive one for changing unless I've seen real improvement. So Z Forge in the irons from pitching wedge up to seven, seven iron, iron. Yeah. and then you've go into a little bit of a cavity. So you've gone full combo here. Yeah, full combo. Um, so again. Z785, yeah. um, just a slightly slightly bigger sole, just makes the longer irons easier to hit. Um, and yeah, why wouldn't you take advantage of that? No, absolutely. And, but do you, are you looking, is it because of, like you don't need to worry about generally strike issues, because obviously you're striking it pretty good all the time. Is it, was it more of a flight kind of thing for you? What, what was um, it all about? It just gives you a little bit more forgiveness and it just tends to fly a little bit higher. Um, you know, again, a lot of guys, Nowadays, you wouldn't see that many using the pure blades just because, like I say, the equipment's that good now. Um, you know, it used to be easier to shape it with the, the sort of shorter irons, but I think, you know, nowadays you don't see as much shape as maybe what you used to. So, yeah, that's the only reason to, to go to it, to be honest. So, where do you finish then? You go up to four iron in the set? Yeah, and then I've got a two and iron. And then what happens? Um, yeah. I have a rather hidden, uh, yeah, tailor made RSI uh, UDI two iron. Okay, and what what? This is kind of, you know, I mean, how far do you hit your four iron? I hit my four iron about 2, 214, 215 on the carry. Okay. And the two iron goes about 235 on the carry, so there's a 20 yard gap there. So are you, what, what, what's that, what do you do then? If you're trying to bridge that gap, what yeah. do you do? Do you take a bit off the two iron or do you try and hammer the four iron? How does it, how does it work for you? Or you do you a bit of both? Try and avoid that gap as much as possible in yeah. terms of par fives laying up um, or short par fours. But yeah, if I have to, then I'll try and hit a sort of higher, softer two iron um, as opposed to, but if I've got a, you know, not much in front of the green, I'll try and play a lower four iron okay. and manipulate it that way. Then you move into, have you got a hybrid or you go nope. straight into yeah, three straight wood? Yeah, straight four iron to two iron, straight into three wood. Okay, so what three wood have you got under there? So I was in the video at China Fleet RBZ. using the RBZ, very old school. Um, yeah, RBZ so this three is wood. stage two. So yeah. I use an RBZ five wood, yeah. which is the stage one, so the <laughs> one before that. And I've, I've, I remember you using playing county golf and things like that. I remember you using white headed drivers and white headed fairways for yeah, a long yeah. time. So, this is a bit of a trusty, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, probably 2012, I would say. Um, something like that, yeah, yeah. Long old time with the, yeah, the same shaft. Um, that's been in there since, yeah. And that's, well that, yeah, but that's not even, that's an R11 shaft. Yeah. Then. So that's actually, that's the older shaft again, is it? Yeah, I've had this shaft, yeah, probably going back to 2010, same shaft, but like you say, performed so well. Again, it's it's a stock. So is that a stock shaft from the Taylor made? Is it a tour yeah. version or? Oh yeah, Aldila tour. tour. Yeah. Okay, and it's X. Or 75 is... extra stiff. Yeah. So not afraid to go into a stock shaft when it feels right for you. Correct. And stick with it. Absolutely right. So now, uh, then you go into driver, and this is what I'll be honest with you. This is what a lot of people in the comments were chatting about was you and Paul and Will, yeah. all using M2 drivers, albeit yours and Paul's being the 2016 model. Correct. And Will using the 2017 model. What is it about this driver that, that you guys kind of like? Um, just the consistency of it. Um, you know, fairly medium spin rates, not too low, not too high, but yeah. just, I found a shaft which I fell in love with, which matched with this head. Yeah. And uh, yeah, from there, it was just such a really good performing driver. So what is the head then? What have you, what, what, what you know, loft of it is 9.5? Yeah, 9.5, um, set just sort of, just off standard loft. Um, okay. Yeah, I tried the M1, but it was just too low spinning. Yeah, Could get a little bit low. more distance out of it, but yeah. just the, the sort of dispersion was a little bit wider than what the M2 is. So even though you know you can find a driver that goes a bit longer, you still have to play golf with it. Correct. You yeah. know, and that's a good, good bit of info for lots of amateur golfers isn't it yeah you, you know? see guys now testing the longer drivers i think callum shinkwin had one out last week on the european tour and i think you know he hit one out of bounds maybe on the 16th yeah. but you know just a lot of guys testing it but you, you know bryson was going to use one in augusta but he didn't in the end because he realized he wasn't as consistent as maybe with a shorter one so yeah 
And shaft then, what shaft have you got in that? Shaft that in that one, I got the with? Ozic Matrix. So the shaft I got fitted for didn't get on with that well when it arrived. And there's a club fitter from Soltash uh, called Nick Yo. He came into the shop and had this one. I had a whack with it and it felt amazing straight away. Yeah. Uh, I think Justin Rose was using this at the time in about 2015. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've had that for, yeah, this will be my fifth year using that. And are that. you massively into that sort of part of the game? You, you know, were you. You know, there's a lot of people out there that get a bit excited about shafts, golf shafts, yep. don't they? So, are you someone like that, or are you someone that just, at the end of the day, whatever it feels right, you go with it. You don't care what it says on it. Don't care what it says on it. If I'm happy with it, I'll use it, yeah. and that's and that. stick with yeah. it. Yeah, hundred percent. So, then you have what's the putter? Because this is probably over the years, James. This has been, in my mind, one of the strongest, one of the strongest parts of your game. And I think that, you know. Occasionally, you can be on the odd streaky side with it, but for the most part, you, your putting has always been pretty solid, hasn't it? Yeah, um, like I say, streaky, and you know, I think perception for me, um, spending a lot of time with Paul talking about strokes gained, yeah. um, you know, looking at you know, probably 50% from eight feet, I would have always expected to hold everything from eight feet, and yeah. if I'd hold seven out of ten in a round, I would probably be disappointed, but um, yeah, I think that part of consistency is improving now I've sort of taken a bit of pressure off it yeah and that's a mental game isn't it 100 percent. yeah you know that's you accepting certain situations or understanding the, um, the strokes gain maybe a little bit more and taking a bit of pressure off yourself really. yeah definitely um, so what is that putter it is a metal x7 yeah. um odyssey. it is odyssey but yeah. it's also got the toe hang yeah, so it's got a little bit of drift in the So actual... I would have a tendency to take it back a little bit closed yes. and then open it up. So that toe hang just helps with the, the little bit of rotation of the toe um, just to help with the arc. And are you, is that a feel thing for you or is that just purely on numbers that you've seen from, from what you've got on Sam Putt Lab? Or... Yeah, from um, Phil Kenyon. I've been to see him a couple of times yeah. and he's always suggested a toe weighted putter. Um, so yeah, that's something that sort of... And you've used Odyssey putters for years, if I remember right. You've yeah, used I think, the two ball for a long, long time. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I've always um, flirted with the two ball ever since the age of 14. Yeah. But the only problem with the two ball is it's face balanced, so yeah. it doesn't help with the rotation. rotation but if I am ever really struggling, I'll go back to the two ball just for a comfort factor. Now, you've moved into some different little bit of work on the top end of yes, the bag, haven't really you? Exciting. So what, you've got two new head covers in there. Yes, I got fitted um, uh, with tight lists about a month ago. Right. And what have you got? I uh, got there. TSI 2, um, three wood, so yeah. slightly deeper face. Okay. And so these have just arrived. Literally just arrived this week. They, yeah. They, have, they, have you hit them yet? I have, yes. You've had a little go. So you've got what is that? It's a Tor AD graphite design X Flex. Yep. Um, and that is set. What is that? That's a what loft is that? That's 15 degrees. 15 degrees, yeah. and, the, and the and the actual setting is A1. A1. So you've got it at 15 degrees. Correct. You're happy with that. It gives you some good numbers. Yeah, flies a little is bit it, higher, a little bit more spin than my old. Is it beating your made? Um, three wood is pretty similar, but yeah, beating it. But the driver was a yeah, driver was a real change. Um, you know, I was getting two two mile an hour quicker just with the the driver than the M2. Ball speed. Uh, ball speed was four four mile an four hour. Mile quicker. An hour quicker. Yeah, one sixty eight to one seventy two, um, and just the feel off the face was yeah phenomenal. So um, that is the TSI TSI three, three, and that is a nine degree set at A one. You've kind of got it in the you've got it T one setting, so you've got a little bit into the the toe area of the from a weight point of view. Yeah. Um, and then shaft, same as what you've got in the three wood. Exactly the same as what I've got in the Tor three. Tor AD, graphite design, X Flex. Like the look of it? Yeah, um, really do. Um, I say it's a slightly different look than the, the TSI 2. Um, it's very nice. But yeah, I had a Titleist driver since 2008, and right. I went to the fitting sort of not that confident that yeah. I would improve on my M2, but I was really shocked and really surprised at how how good that was yeah. um, and just the feel off the face as well you know it feels like it comes off hot um, you know some of the clubs i've hit in recent years have almost felt a little bit dead yeah um, but yeah beautiful feel off the face fantastic and then last but not least golf ball what golf ball do you use right uh, now Titleist pro v1x and you've probably used it for years yeah you um ever since the pro v came out i've always used the x um, never never moved away from never a, moved from the x pro v1. i did use away uh, move away in 2010 uh, when i got on the european tour just using sort of strixen 
Um, but back end of that year, I went back to tightless wedges and uh, tightless ball ever since. So there you go, there's a little what's in the bag with James Roof. Amazing again, when you see all these clubs that these top, top players are using, when they find something they like, it's very rare you'll see them change it. And ultimately, they're only ever gonna change if the numbers start to improve. Let me know though, put your comments down below. I'd like to hear what you think about that what's in the bag, what you've seen with James this week on the vlog. If you haven't seen that vlog, just have a little look up here. I'll put a little note there for you to have a little click onto that and you can head over to China Fleet and see us playing out there. If you have anything in your golf bag that James has, I'd like to hear that as well. So put that down in the comments. And don't forget, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing and we'll look forward to catching up with you again soon.